a lot of times people get this misconception about data science. They think it's more on the, the, the what does it say, the, the focus is more on the technology, so the, the machine learning, the, the artificial intelligence, but in reality, it's gonna be further from the truth, right? Yeah. So a lot of what we do, and I currently am working in healthcare, right? Um, although my title might have changed, so it's no more uh, statisticians, they call us data scientists, but on a day-to-day -day basis, that's specifically what we do. It's like looking at large amounts of data, but actually being able to clean that data, um, understand the data, um, work with the data, and then maybe build a machine learning model or an AI, those more fancy buzzword terms that you use, that would be like 25% of the job. But the real work, right, the 75% of the job is actually like playing around with the data. So, and, and those are all, all of that is, that all comes from traditional um, um, statistics and mathematical skills that we, we used to do in the past. We've been doing it always. Okay. Um, and that's not known, that's not showed, like that's something that people don't really talk about, but that's what you do for majority of your work. It's actually the statistics, the maths, the cleaning, um, and the SQL, and the, yeah, the, the database uh, tables, and like just structuring the architecture. That's all things we've been doing for years, but we don't speak about that. We only speak about machine learning and artificial intelligence, which is like 25% of the job. Yeah. If you're lucky, in most cases, you don't even need that. So yeah. so yeah, but on a daily basis, it's more statistics, understanding data, data analysis, basically, yeah. Depending on your organization, so large organizations in particular, and some of them, they're just not innovative. And so I'm seeing a lot of gaps. In retail, there's so many gaps. You're like, how did you build a brand so big and you don't have the basics? Every, a lot of things might be outsourced. And so your systems are just slow. It's high touch. And the idea now is <laughs> where I am is, okay, we're building a data analytics team, but we really also need to build some, some data science into it. And the idea is um, you can collect so much data. Uh, for example, one of the things that I'm working on is, has to do with um, analytics, online analytics. And that's, there's a lot of data that comes there. So for example, if you're talking about um, a physical store, the kind of data you're collecting, it's foot traffic, you don't know who your customer is, firstly, when they walk into the store. So your main, your entry point for the customer is anonymous, right? It's only if they buy, then you know. Um, whereas online, which is makes uh, the tasks that I'm doing really interesting, is that if they log in and they intend to buy, or if they want to check out, they have to log in. So you know your customer from the time that they, um, that they, that they interact with your website. So much data is uh, collected. If you look at just what Google Analytics collects, clickstream data, um, what, you, what you buy, every single click on, your, on the website, um, and you take into consideration all of that data, and what you try to do is personalize the experience. That's one of the projects you're trying to do now, is personalize an experience and use several models. There are several plugins that you can use, but one of them um, has been used widely and successfully, especially when you in these new language models, right? Um, reinforcement learning, right? With human feedback, so to speak. And so you're trying to understand, you have a base model with your weights, you know, standard default weights, and those weights will change. So you have a model for each person that tries to learn the preferences of that person based on what they buy and how to recommend them. And you try to recommend those things dynamically. So if they act, if they act on path, if they act, make action A, you, produce outcome A, make action B, produce outcome B. But there's a, an indefinite number of these actions. Uh, well, not indefinite, there's a finite, but there's many, many yeah. permutations of what a user journey can look like, potentially. And the idea is to maximize the potential of a purchase. And that's your objective function or your objective, is to try and maximize the potential of a purchase. Um. Each and every mining company has the, has the aim. So the aim is to get a revenue. Yeah. So the only way to get a revenue is through blasting. So as, as, as a mining engineer, more especially focus on the, the production side, um, you are actually the one who is keeping the, the company going. 
So I wanna be, I wanna be um, be that person who's yeah. who is actually you know reaching the targets yeah. for the mind. Okay. I think, as you said, lots of headway has been has been made in the field, and it's been you know a very just interesting and fulfilling time um, to be to be in the space um, somewhat, but. Yeah, the most interesting um, thing coming in the market is, you know, those long acting um, injectables okay. for, for HIV prevention. And yeah, so it looks like taking an injection every couple of months mm -hmm. instead of taking that pill um, oh, okay. a day, which is also an advancement yeah. in, yes, in, yes. Um, in taking that, that pill a day. So that's exciting. That's in the pipeline. Um, yeah, kind of just in the final stages before, you know, distributing um, those medicines to um, the public. That's So if we see an author, for example, has used a certain method or statistical method or statistical analysis, um, we would, that, and we understand, okay, maybe um, different statistical data and, and an analytical technique would have been mm. a little bit better. Mm. We would approach the, the author asking them why did they use these specific methods or these specific um, data analysis methods? Um, and then we would suggest, listen, yeah, maybe try this. This would actually work a little bit better. It doesn't yeah. skew the results. It just gives a greater um, result because some data analysis gives a little bit more closer relevant information than others. Yeah. So the authors are very um, receptive um, because they trust us yes, as, yes. as editors. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's, yes, in a general sense, right? <clears throat> if you look, South Africa has one of the top banking systems, right? You have all the top four, top five banks have imprints all over Africa, mm -hmm. right? In the UK, in, in, in the US as well, right? So we were up there in terms of our liquidity. We're well, we're well protected. And the regulator, which is the South African Reserve Banks, makes sure from a regulatory perspective, forcing these banks, you know, to protect uh, the depositors, which is the customers, right? Yeah. Which is the normal me and you and my money and your money within the bank. So I think in general, we are, we are quite safe. Yes. And then again, um, they are all interconnected, you know, yeah. um, in a way, like for example, um, so let me start with nuclear engineering, right? For example, um, you do nuclear reactor science mm. or nuclear reactor technology or engineering, for example, you know. So if you look at where nuclear medicine comes from, nuclear medicine, what we call radioisotopes or radiopharmaceuticals, they actually come from a nuclear reactor, you know, that's, that is designed, operated, maintained by a nuclear engineer, you know. Yeah. So yeah, part of the program that I did in Russia, um, what I liked about it was that it was more wholesome, you know. It wasn't exactly just focusing on the clinical stuff, yes. but at least there was that engineering stuff as well, you know, Yeah. Um, for me. So that's, I suppose, uh, looking at the entire program, that was my, I mean, as a, as a nuclear engineer at heart, um, the nuclear reactor part and the production of radio pharmaceuticals in a nuclear reactor, uh, that was mostly my, I suppose, my interest. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah.